Sphota Devanagari Sphota, the Sanskrit for bursting, opening, spurt, is an important concept in the Indian grammatical tradition of Vyakarana, relating to the problem of speech production, how the mind orders linguistic units into coherent discourse and meaning. The theory of Sphota is associated with Bhartarhari c. 5th century, an early figure in Indic linguistic theory, mentioned in the 670s by Chinese traveller Yi Jing. Bhartarhari is the author of the Vakupadhyaya treatise on words and sentences. The work is divided into three books: the Brahma Kanda or Agama Samakaya, aggregation of traditions; the Vakya Kanda and the Pada Kanda or Prakarnaka, miscellaneous. He theorized the act of speech as being made up of three stages: conceptualization by the speaker, pasyanti, idea; performance of speaking, madhyama. Medium. Comprehension by the interpreter, Vaikari, complete utterance. Bhartarhari is of the Sabda Advaita, speech monistic, school which identifies language and cognition. According to George Cardona, Vakupadhyaya is considered to be the major Indian work of its time on grammar, semantics, and philosophy. Topic: <inaudible> Origin of the term. While the Svota theory proper originates with Bhartarhari, the term has a longer history of use in the technical vocabulary of Sanskrit grammarians, and Bhartarhari may have been building on the ideas of his predecessors, whose works are partly lost. Sanskrit Svota is etymologically derived from the root svat to burst. It is used in its technical linguistic sense by Patanali 2nd century BCE, in reference to the bursting forth of meaning or idea on the mind as language is uttered. Patanali's sphota is the invariant quality of speech. The acoustic element dh vani can be long or short, loud or soft, but the sphota remains unaffected by individual speaker differences. Thus, a single phoneme varna such as k, p, or a, is an abstraction, distinct from variants produced in actual enunciation. Eternal qualities in language are already postulated by Yaska, in his Nirukta 1 .1, where reference is made to another ancient grammarian, Adambarayana, about whose work nothing is known, but who has been suggested as the original source of the concept. The grammarian Vyadi, author of the lost text Samgraha, may have developed some ideas in Svota theory, in particular some distinctions relevant to Dh Vani are referred to by Bhartarhari. There is no use of Svota as a technical term prior to Patanali, but Panini refers to a grammarian named Svotayana as one of his predecessors. This has induced Panini's medieval commentators such as Haridatta to ascribe the first development of the Svotavada to Svotayana. Vakupadhyaya The account of the Chinese traveller Yi Jing places a firm terminus anti-Quem of AD 670 on Bhartarhari. Scholarly opinion had formerly tended to place him in the 6th or 7th century, current consensus places him in the 5th century. By some traditional accounts, he is the same as the poet Bhartarhari who wrote the Satakatreya. In the Vakupadhyaya, the term Svota takes on a finer nuance, but there is some dissension among scholars as to what Bhartarhari intended to say. Svota retains its invariant attribute, but sometimes its indivisibility is emphasized and at other times it is said to operate at several levels. In verse I.93, Bhartarhari states that the Svota is the universal or linguistic type sentence type or word type, as opposed to their tokens sounds, Bhartarhari develops this doctrine in a metaphysical setting, where he views Svota as the language capability of man, revealing his consciousness. Indeed, the ultimate reality is also expressible in language, the Sabda Brahman, or eternal verbum. Early Indologists such as A. B. Keith felt that Bhartrari's Svota was a mystical notion, owing to the metaphysical underpinning of Bhartrari's text, Vakupadhyaya where it is discussed. Also, the notion of flash or insight or revelation central to the concept also lent itself to this viewpoint. However, the modern view is that it is perhaps a more psychological distinction. Bhartarhari expands on the notion of svota in Patanali, and discusses three levels Varna svota, at the syllable level. George Cardona feels that this remains an abstraction of sound, a further refinement on Patanali for the concept of phoneme now it stands for units of sound. Pada Svota, at the word level, and 
Vakya Svota, at the sentence level, he makes a distinction between Svota, which is whole and indivisible, and Nada, the sound, which is sequenced and therefore divisible. The Svota is the causal root, the intention, behind an utterance, in which sense is similar to the notion of lemma in most psycholinguistic theories of speech production. However, Svota arises also in the listener, which is different from the lemma position. Uttering the nada induces the same mental state or svota in the listener, it comes as a whole, in a flash of recognition or intuition pratiba, shining forth. This is particularly true for vakya svota, where the entire sentence is thought of by the speaker, and grasped by the listener as a whole. Bimal K. Matilal has tried to unify these views, he feels that for Bhartarhari the very process of thinking involves vibrations, so that thought has some sound-like properties. Thought operates by sabdanayar speaking, so that the mechanisms of thought are the same as that of language. Indeed, Bhartarhari seems to be saying that thought is not possible without language. This leads to a somewhat Horfian position on the relationship between language and thought. The svota then is the carrier of this thought, as a primordial vibration. Sometimes the nada svota distinction is posited in terms of the signifier-signified mapping, but this is a misconception. In traditional Sanskrit linguistic discourse e.g. in Katyayana, Vikaka refers to the signifier, and vakya the signified. The vikaka vakya relation is eternal for Katyayana and the Mimamsakas, but is conventional among the Naya. However, in Bhartarhari, this duality is given up in favor of a more holistic view, for him, there is no independent meaning or signified, the meaning is inherent in the word or the svota itself. Reception Vyakarana Svota theory remained widely influential in Indian philosophy of language and was the focus of much debate over several centuries. It was adopted by most scholars of Vyakarana grammar, but both the Mimamsa and Naya schools rejected it, primarily on the grounds of compositionality. Adherents of the Svota doctrine were holistic or non-compositional suggesting that many larger units of language are understood as a whole, whereas the Mimamsakas in particular proposed compositionality According to the former, word meanings, if any, are arrived at after analyzing the sentences in which they occur. This debate had many of the features animating present-day debates in language over semantic holism, for example. The Mimamsakas felt that the sound units or the letters alone make up the word. The sound units are uttered in sequence, but each leaves behind an impression, and the meaning is grasped only when the last unit is uttered. The position was most ably stated by Kumari Labhata 7th century, who argued that the svotas at the word and sentence level are after all composed of the smaller units, and cannot be different from their combination. However, in the end it is cognized as a whole, and this leads to the misperception of the svota as a single indivisible unit. Each sound unit in the utterance is an eternal, and the actual sounds differ owing to differences in manifestation. The Naya view is enunciated among others by Jayanta 9th century, who argues against the Mimamsa position by saying that the sound units as uttered are different, e.g. for the sound G, we infer its G hood based on its similarity to other such sounds, and not because of any underlying eternal. Also, the Vikaka vacuum linkage is viewed as arbitrary and conventional, and not eternal. However, he agrees with Kumarila in terms of the compositionality of an utterance. Throughout the second millennium, a number of treatises discussed the Svota doctrine. Particularly notable is Nagesabhata's Svotavada 18th century. Nagesa clearly defines Svota as a carrier of meaning, and identifies eight levels, some of which are divisible. Modern linguistics In modern times, scholars of Bhartarhari have included Ferdinand de Saussure, who did his doctoral work on the genitive in Sanskrit, and lectured on Sanskrit and Indo-European languages at the Paris and at the University of Geneva for nearly three decades. It is thought that he might have been influenced by some ideas of Bhartarhari, particularly the Svota debate. In particular, his description of the sign, as composed of the signifier and the signified, where these entities are not separable, the whole mapping from sound to denotation constitutes the sign, seems to have some colorings of svota in it. Many other prominent European scholars around 1900, including linguists such as Leonard Bloomfield and Roman Jakobsen may have been influenced by Bhartarhari. Editions of the Vakupadia 
Wilhelm Rau, Barterharis Vacupadia, die Mulikarikas nach den Handschriften HRSG, und mit einem Pata Index Version, Wiesbaden, Steiner, 1977, Abhandlungen für die Kunde des Morgenlandes 42, 4. Wilhelm Rau, Barterharis Vacupadia II, Text der Pomblatt Handschrift Trivendrum SN. 532 a. Stuttgart, Steiner, 1991, Abhandlungen der Geists und Sozialwissenschaftlichen Klass, Akademie der Wissenschaften und der Literatur nr. 7, ISBN 3-515-06001-4 Saroja Bait, Word Index to the Vacupadia of Barter, Hari, together with the complete text of the Vacupadia Delhi, Eastern Book Linkers, 1992. ISBN 8185133549 Opus Lingua Vacupatia Delhi, Eastern Book Linkers, 1992 Alessandro Grahalai, Teoria dello Sfota nel Sesto Anica della Nyayamanjari di Jayantabada, 2003, University. La Sapienza. Thesis, Rome. 2003. Alessandro Grahalai, History and Transmission of the Nyayamanjari. Critical edition of the section on the Sfota, Wien, Akademie Verlag, 2015. Clear, E. H., Hindu Philosophy, in E. Craig, ed., Routledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy, London, Routledge, 1998, 1. Saroja Bate, Johannes Bronkhorst, eds., Barterhari, Philosopher and Grammarian, Proceedings of the First International Conference on Barterhari, University of Pune, January 6 8, 1992, Mutilal Banarsidas Publishers, 1997, ISBN 81 208 1198 4. K. Raghavan Pillai, Trans. Bartrahari. The Vakupadia, Critical Texts of Cantos I and II with English Translation Delhi, Mutilal Banarsidas, 1971. Coward, Harold G., The Sfota Theory of Language, A Philosophical Analysis, Delhi, Mutilal Banarsidas, 1980. Herzberger, Radhika, Bartrahari and the Buddhists, Dordrecht, D. Rydell, Kluwer Academic Publishers, 1986. Hoban, Jan E. M., The Sambanda Samudisha and Bartrahari's Philosophy of Language, Groningen, Egbert Forsten, 1995. Iyer, Subramania, K. A., Bartrahari. A Study of Vakupadia in the Light of Ancient Commentaries, Pune, Deccan College Postgraduate Research Institute, 1969, reprint 1997. Shaw, K. J., Bartrahari and Wittgenstein, in Perspectives on the Philosophy of Meaning, Volume. I, No. 1. New Delhi, 1 over 1, 1990, 80-95. Saroja Bate, Johannes Bronkhorst, eds, Barterhari, Philosopher and Grammarian, Proceedings of the First International Conference on Barterhari, University of Pune, January 6-8, 1992, Mutilal Banarsidas Publishers, 1997, ISBN 81-208-1198-4. Patnaik, Tandra, Sabda, A Study of Bartrari's Philosophy of Language, New Delhi, DK Printworld, 1994, ISBN 81-246-0028-7. Maria Piera Candotti, Interpretations du discours metalinguistique, La fortune du sutra A1-1-68 chez Patanali et Bartrari, Kaikayan Studi e Testi, 1, Science della Religione, Firenze University Press, 2006, Dis. Univ. Lausanne, 2004, ISBN 978-88-8453-452-1 External links The Doctrine of Sfota by Anurban Dash Bartrahari by S. Theodoru